God is good. Amen. And He loves us so much. And He's given us so much authority. Jesus is triumphant. He is so, you, you're allowed to say amen. 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 Come on, let's preach together today. Let's have fun preaching together. We'll, you'll get more out of the word if, if we respond and say yes and amen. That is truth. I believe it. I agree with it. I respond to it. I take it. It's mine. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, he rose from the dead and he ascended to the highest place. And he sits in the highest heavens, in the highest throne that is far above all other principalities and powers and every other name that can be given. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen. Amen. There is coming a day, one day when Christ returns and He is bringing all the kingdoms of this world under the authority of His kingdom. He is the King of His kingdom and His kingdom shall reign forevermore. And we are children of the King, children of the kingdom of God. Amen. We are royalty, royal priesthood. We are not beggars. We're not paupers living outside of the castle, outside of the palace, outside of the kingdom, begging on the streets. No, we are children of Almighty God, royal priesthood of believers living inside the kingdom. It's given us royal robes. We have authority in the king. Matthew 28 verse 18, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. It's called us to be ambassadors of the highest government of heaven. To call rebel planet earth to obedience to Jesus Christ. He's given us authority. He's commissioned us to be ambassadors. We carry an authority from the King of Kings. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That means the devil has no authority. Come on. Amen. If Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth, guess what? It means the devil has no authority. He has no true legitimate authority. He just has illegitimate, stolen authority, but it's not true authority. Amen. So when you resist him in the authority of Jesus, he has to flee. He cannot resist you. He's not more powerful than Jesus. Amen. Jesus has all authority. And guess what? You are in Christ. You are seated in the one who has all authority in heaven and on earth. Ephesians chapter 1 talks about the authority of Jesus. He ascended to that highest place, sat down on that highest throne, ruling and governing. And then Ephesians chapter 2 talks about us. We're raised together with Christ and seated with Christ in heavenly places with Christ. Verse 6, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where is Jesus seated? In the highest place. Above all powers and principalities, above the devil, above demons, above sickness, every name that can be given. Jesus sits higher. He has authority over those things. Where are we seated? we seated with Christ on His throne, with Him, co-ruling, reigning with Christ. We're in the one who has all authority in heaven and earth. Do you know how much authority you've got? We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the Son He loves, Jesus Christ. We have been brought out of the kingdom of darkness, no longer subject to the kingdom of darkness, no longer under the kingdom of darkness, no longer influenced by the kingdom of darkness, no longer under the power, but we've been brought out of it and brought into the kingdom of Almighty God. Your authority doesn't come from your performance, whether good or bad. Your authority comes from where you're seated. Amen. And you are seated in Christ. 
who has all authority in heaven and earth. See, but religion will try to tell you that your authority comes from your performance. Whether you do good, whether you sin, or if you sin, then you've got no authority. You can't resist the devil because you sin. So the de- no, 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 no. My authority doesn't come from my performance. Is it co- if it came from my performance, I would have no authority. I'd have no rights. Amen. It comes from being seated in Christ, our position in Christ. It comes from grace. Our authority comes from the grace of God. It doesn't come from the law. It doesn't come from works. It doesn't come from self-effort and performance. It comes from grace. It's the grace of God that we're empowered to have authority here on earth. You and I, we can walk in great authority. The Bible says that the devil... 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, our adversary, the devil, he walks around like a lion. So he's not a lion, but he walks around like a lion. He, he pretends like he's, what does the lion mean? The lion is a symbol for authority. That's my lion impersonation. <laughs> that's, that's my lion. I'm trying. It says, be sober, be vigilant. Okay, don't, don't be ignorant. Don't, don't think, oh, no, there's no devil. It's, it's, uh, I'm fine. It's, no, be sober. Be vigilant. We've got to be vigilant against the enemy. It says, because your adversary. Okay, so while we're in this earth, we have an adversary. This is the devil. The devil. Okay, we do have an adversary. And all you've got to do is look around in this world, and you'll see the work of the devil at work. Amen? Bringing destruction and death over so many's lives. Tormenting people. Bringing sickness. Jesus went around anointed by the Holy Spirit, destroying the works of the enemy. Amen. Healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. It's not God that makes people sick. It's the devil. The devil's going around oppressing people, bringing destruction, death over people. We have an adversary in this earth. But you know, we don't have to be afraid of him. That's the thing. Believers, believers of God, saints of God. Mighty, victorious, authoritative saints of God. We don't have to be afraid of the enemy. I think it was Smith Wigglesworth. He went one time to minister in some city and he was being hosted by some people and he was sleeping in his bed at nighttime and he woke up because his bed was being shaken. It was being rattled and shaken and lifted up. They were lifting up the, the ends of his bed and he woke up thinking, what is this? And he looked down. In in the darkness, and he saw demonic spirits. He saw these ugly beasts and these these spiritual beasts just shaking his bed, trying to like scare me. And he wakes up and he goes, oh, it's only you. I'm going back to sleep. Put my bed down. And they put the bed down. He goes, I'm going back to sleep. And he just went back to sleep. Woke up, had a great sleep. Woke up in the morning, went and ministered powerfully. Because they just pose as lions. Devil roams around like a lion. Like a lion, seeking those who he may destroy. Just put that up again. Walk around like a lion, like a roaring lion, lion, seeking those that he may devour. And here's the thing. He may not devour me. I'm sorry, devil, but you're not going to devour me. I'm not afraid of you. I've been given authority in Christ. I have all authority in Christ Jesus. And I can trample on snakes and scorpions and demonic spirits and demonic powers. I'm not subject to them. Demonic spirits don't have some sovereign power that's greater than the cross. No, they were defeated at the cross. They were disarmed at the cross. Their ammunition was taken away from them. The law, that accusing law was taken away. They were disarmed at the cross. Jesus defeated them at the cross, not for himself. He did it for us. Our enemy has been defeated. So you shouldn't be so scared of him. Amen. I know this church isn't scared of him. Amen. Never, ever, ever, ever be scared of the devil. You are greater. You have more authority, more power in Jesus Christ. And I want to say to you today, we have to have a revelation. It is not based on our performance. Don't put your faith in your performance in order to have authority. Put your faith in Jesus, in His grace, in the fact that you are seated in Christ, in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. It is your position in Christ that gives you authority. And we have authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, to rebuke demonic spirits and command them to go. And anything that would try to come and attack us and harm us, we don't have to tolerate it. We don't have to accept it. 
We can resist it. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee from you. He has to. He has to because he has illegitimate authority and Christ has greater authority. And you are in Christ, so you have greater authority. So anytime the enemy tries to mess with you, you can resist him and he has to go. Amen? Amen? Is this a good word? Is this a good word? I started off a bit intense. Hey, come on, let's just start intense. Amen? Authority of Christ. Oh, believer, we have great authority in Christ. Oh, that the church would discover its authority. Hey, imagine if the church around the world discovered the authority that it has in Christ. We've been called to disciple the nations. We're called to go out with power and authority and disciple the nations to bring the kingdom of God here to earth. To set the captives free. To, to drive out demons. To heal the sick. To raise the dead. To cleanse the lepers. That's what Jesus has called us to do, empowered us to do, enabled us to do. And the more we understand our authority in Christ, the greater we will rise up in it and begin to exercise it over other people. Amen. We're called to set the captives free, our family free, our friends free, the sick free. Amen. 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 One of the things I wanted to just say is, you know, often we can face a spirit of discouragement. Amen. How many of you have ever felt really discouraged in your life? You know, we're, a little while ago, I, um, we had just started the ministry, started my ministry a year and a half ago. And um, God gave me two promises when we started the ministry. He said, Ryan, I will add the momentum and you will not have to worry about money. God, God said, he told me that. He promised me that. And so for the first six months of, of our ministry, I was, I was worried about there's not enough momentum and we don't have enough money. I was worried about it. And uh, God had to just speak to me and take me through a process. So that and he brought me to a place where I just, I just came to a place where I just trusted him. He's going to add the momentum, and I don't have to worry about money. Since I came to that place, it's, it's been amazing. But while I was in that place, I started to get discouraged because it, it felt like not enough was happening because I'm an impatient person. I just want stuff to happen. <laughs> How many of you deal with the spirit of impatience? <laughs> no, when you want to see things happen, you know the calling on your life. You know what's been promised. You want to see it happen. But God's also got a pace, the pace of grace. Amen. There's a rhythm in grace, especially when God says, hey, I will add the momentum. Just trust me. You don't have to worry about the money. I'm going to, I will sort out the money. God's been doing that. But in that time, uh, there was times when I got discouraged because there was one time, I'll just be honest, okay? I'll, I'll, just, I'll just be honest. There was one time when I, I wrote an article, okay? I, I spent a lot of time writing this article. I forget what it was about. And then I, I posted it, but it didn't do very well. Like not many people read it, you know. Not many people read this article. And, I, and, you know, I just had all these thoughts. I just felt this feeling of not much is happening in my ministry. There's not a lot of momentum. We are just started. Sometimes you just got to take it easy on yourself. You know, just stop putting yourself under so much pressure. Someone once said, it's a, we overestimate what we can do in a year but we underestimate what we can do in a lifetime. You know, someone else said, slow is the new fast. I like that. Slow is the new fast. You just, you go after what God has called you to. You head in that direction and you be faithful. You be consistent. And all you got to do is just grow a little bit. A little bit of momentum, one step at a time. Just grow. As long as you're going in that right direction, God will just add the momentum. Add the momentum over time, one year, two years, three years, five years, ten years. You look back, so many things would have happened. So many lives would have been touched. And we want to do it all straight away. And I was trying to do it all in the first six months, and it wasn't happening as fast as I wanted it to happen. And God was saying, Ryan, just chill out. <laughs> so I released this article, and not many people read it. And, and I, I got discourage 
and I started, I started agreeing with lies. I started agreeing with discouragement. I, I, started, I started saying, <laughs> this, this sounds actually really pathetic, all right? I'm just going to be honest, open and honest. I started saying, no, no one's listening, God. No one cares what I'm saying. You know, what, what, what's the point of me doing this? I'm, maybe I should just stop. Maybe I should just give up. And it's like, as I started to agree with those, those thoughts, it's like a spirit of discouragement just came over me, just came upon me. It found a vulnerability as I agreed with lies. It found opportunity as I started to agree with lies. Yeah, I'm not that good at this. What's the point of doing this? I may as well just stop. And it's like I was feeling discouraged, but when this, this spirit of, I didn't get possessed by a demon, all right? Because I can't, I can't be possessed by a demon. I'm possessed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. He's just, he's filling me. There's no space for any demons. Right. Amen. I, I can never be. I'll tell you right now, I can never be possessed by a demon. I just, I won't allow, I won't open the door. I won't allow him in. Just too full of God and I know my authority. But the enemy, see, I, I a born again believer can't, there's no more open doors for the devil. If you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, Christ at the cross, he shut every door. Okay, your sin doesn't open a door for the devil to come and just, oh, now he's got authority just to mess with your life and make you sick. No, it's rubbish. That's religion. It's false teaching. At the cross, the enemy's power was broken. Every door was slammed in his face. You're in Christ. Amen. But if we're silly, we can give the enemy an opportunity. If we agree with lies, we empower that lie in our life to begin to operate. If we agree with fear, if we come under a spirit of fear and go, oh, I'm so afraid. Oh, I, you know, it's actually, we kind of, the enemy finds opportunity. And see, he's illegitimate. He has illegitimate authority. He doesn't need to come through the gates of authority. He just climbs over the fence He'll, if we let him. Amen. If we don't know our authority and we don't resist him, he will just look for any opportunity he can find. And so if we start to agree with lies, oh, I'm weak, I'm useless, I'm pathetic, no one cares. It's like he'll just, he'll just come in, take as much ground as he can. And it's like this spirit of discouragement just came around me. And then, and then the next, actually that night I had a dream. And, and in my dream, there was someone from my past who, who used to really, um, he was in the church that I was a part of. And he was one of the, the leaders, but he didn't like me. And, uh, and he, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but he just really didn't like me. And he was always, he actually just ended up discouraging me all the time. Just kind of always trying to undermine me. There was just something a bit off about this person. And, uh, and so in my dream, I was going to this church and this person was there in the dream. And I was like, oh, what are they doing here? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I was like, oh, I got to do church with that person. And, and I woke up in the morning just thinking, what was that about? Just feeling discouraged. But I didn't actually know what was happening. I was feeling discouraged. And then that day was my wife's 40th birthday, Kylie, my beautiful wife's 40th birthday. And um, we were having this discussion and I was saying, yeah, I want to make these videos. There's, there's something stirring on my heart. I want to make these videos. And then out of my mouth, I just started saying, yeah, I know, but the videos are not going to be any good and uh, it's probably going to be really bad. And I really struggle to make videos and I, I kind of suck at it. And I just started s just talking all this rubbish, just agreeing with lies. And as I did that, I got even more discouraged. It's like there, there's, there's natural discouragement and then there's spiritual discouragement. Amen. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's like the spirit of discouragement just came around me. And I started feeling so discouraged, so bad. I felt like stopping ministry, giving up. Have you ever felt like just giving up? Just got so discouraged, just wanted to give up. And that night I had another dream. And this person from my past, the same person, he was in my dream again. This time I was having a, like a meeting in my lounge, my home. And Kylie and I, we were there. And there was lots of international people in, in my lounge. And we were serving them tea and coffee and stuff. And then this, this guy was there and I was like, what, what's he doing here? Why is he here? I didn't invite him. Why is he here? And I woke up that next morning again feeling 10 times more discouraged. And, and I was saying, and then I cried out to God. I said, God, what is this? 
Why am I having this dream with this guy? Why is he in my dream? And, and, and the Holy Spirit, he spoke to me. He said, Ryan, that guy represents a spirit of discouragement. Because in your past, that guy, he always discouraged you. you whenever you were around him, you always felt so discouraged. You left his presence feeling discouraged and having to fight to get encouraged again. And going to the church, he was at the church. That represents your ministry into churches. And having people um, in, uh, in your home, that represents your ministry, your interna international ministry, because I was hosting international guests. And it's like the enemy is trying to discourage you from ministering in local churches, your local ministry. And he's also trying to discourage you from your international ministry. It's a spirit of discouragement trying to talk you out of it, trying to get you so discouraged to stop you from doing it. And then I heard God saying, but, but it's a spirit and it's very easy to break because it's a spirit. And suddenly God opened my eyes and I saw what was happening in the spirit. And, I, and, I, and then I started, I started to get happy. I started to get joyful. I thought, wow, that's true. Because if that's a spirit, then it's so easy to break it because I know my authority in Christ. But it's like before I didn't realize what was happening. I didn't know that it, what was happening. I just felt really discouraged. And God had to reveal what was happening. And once I knew it, I knew what to do. So I just, I just went and got before God. And I just said, God, I submit to you. I surrender to you. Now this spirit of discouragement, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. I break your power. I break your influence. And I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. And guess what? It went in an instant, in a split second, gone. Suddenly, joy came back. Oh, peace came back. Oh, it's like the, the clouds just parted and the sunshine of heaven just began to shine on my life again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I felt encouragement. It's like, no, I don't want to quit ministry. No, I've, I've got a message. God's given me a voice. It's an important voice. He's, he's made me a voice to the body of Christ. He's given me a message to carry to the nations. I'm not going to give that up because the enemy made me feel a little bit discouraged. I'm not going to just throw it out. I'm not just going to abandon that because only a few people read my article. God said, just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. I've called you. I said, I will add the momentum. I said, you won't have to worry about money. I said, you're going to go to the other side. We're crossing over to the other side. Yes, there's a storm. Yes, there's hardship. Yes, there's opposition. But I said, we're going to the other side. That means we're going to the other side. No matter what you face, no matter what you go through, you are going to the other side. And I said, yes, Jesus, I agree with you. I've been called to the nations. You're going to add the momentum. I am going with you and I felt so much courage coming back and ever since then my courage is just growing Whew. and any time now it's like it's like the Holy Spirit helped me just to be able to see in the spirit and recognize what was happening and any time now I feel that spirit of discouragement trying to come on me I just in an instant I just break it I resist it no way that's not coming on me and you can do that with fear, spirit of fear. The Bible says we haven't been given a spirit of fear. See, but there are spirits of fear that try to get on you. We've been given a spirit of love, a spirit of power, and a spirit of a sound mind. Amen. We've been given authority. We've been given power over demons, over spirits. To resist spirits and trample on them and smash them to pieces and command them to go. You don't have to live in torment. I want to tell you this. Depression is a spirit. Yes, there are natural circumstances, but often people are agreeing with lies. And, and they are becoming more vulnerable to that spirit of depression, that spirit of heaviness that wants to come on them. And they're just laboring. Days, weeks, months, years under that spirit of depression, that thing can be broken in an instant. When you know your authority, when the Holy Spirit opens your eyes and you see, this is what it is. This is a spirit. Now, there might be natural things that you need to do. Okay, You might just not be sleeping and, and you're not getting enough sleep and you're just tired all the time and that you're struggling with depression. Okay, you don't, you don't need to break 
demonic spirits. You just need to go and sleep <laughs> and get a good sleep and get a good sleeping pattern. And then you'll actually find yourself being more positive and it's easier to overcome. Okay, a lot of people are depressed because of just no purpose, just aimless, empty. You've got to get purpose in your life. <laughs> but there's times when there's demonic spirits. You know, Elijah, the prophet, mighty prophet of God, called down fire. You know, on the, on the altar, he was having that big face-off with the, the prophets of Baal. And, uh, you know, God didn't, res- no one responded. The, to, Baal didn't respond to the prophets. But God responded to Elijah and poured down fire. And then they went and killed all those evil prophets of God. Be- Elijah went out and they killed all those evil prophets. And it was a mighty triumphant day. It was glorious, powerful. Man, prophet, mighty prophet. Imagine calling down fire. They, he said, wet, wet the altar. Just pour water over it. So much water. It was doused. It was wet. And even in the midst of that, the fire of God came down and consumed the offering. He went from that situation, like he was feeling powerful, amen? He was feeling like the man. He went in that situation. He went, and along the way, he encountered a messenger from Jezebel. Jezebel, that, that evil lady, there's a, there's, there was a spirit behind Jezebel, that demonic spirit, God-hating spirit, hates the prophets, it hates the voice of God, it hates the, the spirit. And, and she had said to the messenger, you know, go and tell Elijah that, that she's going to, basically she's going to kill Elijah. And he came the messenger came and told Elijah. He heard just the message. He didn't even face Jezebel. He just heard the message. But there was a spirit attached to that message. And as he heard it, fear came on him. And he ran. That mighty prophet of God that walked in such power and authority. He, he heard that message. And he ran into the wilderness. And he fled. And he, said, and he just gave up. He said, God, come and kill me. I want to die. God, kill me. What was that? That was a spirit of discouragement. That was a demonic spirit. You don't just go from walking in such power to suddenly just wanting to run away and give up. And, that, and those demonic, because he agreed with fear. He agreed with the lie. Amen. He heard the lie and, and he agreed with it. And that spirit, that demonic thing found an opportunity in his life. And it caused him to run. And, that, and the demonic wants to get us to run. To run from the call of God. To run from God. To run from our calling in life. To just abandon, to give up and just to want to die. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but you can feel just, I just just want to give up. I just want to die. Man, that is not your thoughts. Those are not your thoughts. Those are demonic. And you don't have to agree with that stuff. You can break it in a moment, in an instant, in Jesus' name. Amen. Suicide is not your thoughts. Suicide is a spirit. And you can break that off, people. Amen? Amen. Okay, if you've got friends, people that are dealing with suicide, feeling tempted to commit suicide, you, you need to break that spirit off them, that spirit of death. You can break it off them. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 We're victorious. When we get up in the morning, the devil should be worried. Demons should be worried. Amen? We don't need to be afraid. Thank Jesus for His authority. It's wonderful. Taking a rest? <laughs> I'm enjoying that. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> you can keep going if you want. Are your fingers sore? You need to stretch, stretch the fingers. <laughs> Is this helping anyone? Is this ministering to anyone? We don't have to tolerate the devil. Amen. Man, I, th- I think we tolerate his rubbish too much. Hey, we just tolerate his. In your marriage. Over your children. Hey? Stuff trying to attack your marriage. See, it's not all natural. Sometimes it's spiritual. Spirits at work trying to just find vulnerabilities. And you, and you need to deal with those things in the spirit. Now, obviously, if you don't ever communicate with your wife and you're mean to her, you can't blame spirits. <laughs> you just need to be nicer to your wife. <laughs> Amen. Hmm. We just need to take authority over our marriages, over our home, 
See, my, my home is a home of peace. It is a house of peace. And see, I'm an ambassador of God. I'm a prince of the kingdom. And in my home, I'm actually, I'm a king. I'm the king of my home. My wife, she's the queen. And our children are our loyal subjects. And they will obey our commands. <laughs> and we will enforce the dominion of our peace in our home. We, we, I, I, I enforce peace in my home. Because when I come home to my house, there needs to be peace in the atmosphere. Amen. I want peace between my marriage. I want peace between my children. My children come in and they're being too loud and not respecting. And they're just making this big ruckus and this noise and being disrespectful. I say, shh, quiet. Be respectful. Okay, now there's one thing to have fun and to play and all of that. But there's just times where it's just like jarring noises. Just, they're just being too loud. It's like, you know what? We're not going to do that in this house. This home is a house of peace. The kids are fighting and they're just fighting and not respecting. I say, you need to stop that. Or there's going to be consequences. My, I, I, our kids growing up, we smack them in love. We discipline them because we love them. We discipline them because we love them. Okay? Because there's a lot of foolishness in the heart of a kid, but the rod of discipline drives it out. Amen? Had to exercise authority. Had to teach them that no means no. Had to teach them to respect authority. I love the Philippines. There's so much respect for authority, I think, right? Is there? It seems, you know, when you guys do that, like, I love that culture. That's beautiful. That doesn't happen in Australia. Australia, there's so much disrespect for authority. In America, rebellion against authority. And uh, I'm not going to have that in my house. My house is the kingdom. Amen. Not the world, it's the kingdom. And there will be peace, there will be authority, there will be government in my home. I tell you, when the, when the government of God is upon our shoulder, there's an increase of peace. When the government is upon His shoulders, there's an increase of peace. Because He extends His peace to His borders, to His boundaries, within His dom domain, within His kingdom. He, he brings peace. Amen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And, and my house is the dominion of peace. I enforce the peace. There's no demons that are going to come into my house and torment my children and torment my wife and bring sickness and bring destruction and bring division. No, I keep that stuff out by the authority of Jesus. Amen. By, by, by talking, communicating with my wife, communicating with my children. We can protect our homes, can protect our churches, protect the church. It's uh, protecting this church, the peace in this church, the unity in this church. It's, it's not up to just Elvin and Mitchie, Pastor Elvin and Mitchie. It's up to every single one of you. It's up to all of, all of us. <laughs> Me too, because I'm a part of the church. It's up to all of us to protect it. So the, the, the Bible says, Paul says, be watchful in prayer. Be watchful in prayer. What an amazing thing to say. Be watchful in prayer. Why? Why be watchful? What is being watchful? It's, it's, it's like on the castle, the guards, they would stand watch. They would watch if any enemy was approaching. If enemy was approaching, they would sound the alarm. They would deal. They would do something to deal with the enemy. They wouldn't just not be watchful. They just no one's watching and the enemy just sneaks up and jumps in and attacks everyone, kills everyone. No, they were being watchful, watching out for the enemy. They saw the enemy approach. There's people on the south wing, the north wing, the east, the west wing, all looking out for enemy approaching. As soon as the enemy approaches, they have a plan what to do. Da -da -da, sound the alarms, the army engages, gets ready and deals with the enemy. Be watchful in prayer. Don't be neglectful in prayer. Watch over your home. Watch over your church. That means in the spirit, you're being watchful in prayer. You're dealing with stuff. You're watching as the enemy approaches. It means there's a propheticness in your praying. In your prayers, you're picking up. As you're praying, you start to pick up the prophetic. The enemy is trying to bring this attack in this church. Wow, he's, the enemy is approaching from the south. He's trying to attack relationships. The enemy is attacking from the, from the He's trying to attack finances. We need to sound the alarm. Hey, guys, we're just feeling in the spirit. The enemy is trying to attack finances. Anyone struggling with finances? Yeah, oh, yeah, we're just struggling. You know, all these people suddenly struggling. 
or sickness. Enemies trying to bring sickness. Hey, we're being watchful in prayer. We're not going to let him do that. We're going to stand together. We're sounding the alarms. The army is rising. We're going to take, we're going to deal with the enemy. We're going to smash him. He's not coming in here. He's not taking what is ours. Can protect. Church can enforce authority. Imagine a church that does this. Protect the unity. See, there shouldn't be so much fighting and strife in a church. When that's happening, no one's being watchful in prayer. It can't be up to just the leaders. It has to be everyone. The priesthood of all believers being watchful, being the army, protecting one another, protecting relationships. Amen. Not just going to let the enemy come in and steal precious things that belong to us, our precious inheritance, our children, our spouse, our friends, the lost, our you know, fellow believers. The enemy's not just going to come in and steal those things. No way. No way. He is a pathetic, defeated little pussycat. He's not a lion. He is a little stray cat that, with a broken back and no teeth. That's how defeated he is. He doesn't get to just come and do whatever he wants. Amen. Amen. Am I staring you? Am I staring you? <laughs> it's good. It's good. I think that's all I want to say. And I think maybe we should just stand together and pray for this church. Have a, have a short, quick, little, powerful prayer meeting for this church. Amen. So why don't you stand to your feet? Sometimes we need to be vigilant in prayer. Amen. Can't be passive. See, when the, when the enemy is attacking, you can't ignore that. Can't be passive. You've got to be vigilant. Amen. Sometimes you need to let a righteous indignation rise up inside of you. Sometimes it's okay to get righteously angry. See, because if, because if someone tried to harm my wife, I would get righteously angry because I'm very jealous. Not, not, not evil jealous, but a loving jealousy. I love my wife. I want to protect her. Anybody who tries to come and harm her, I'm going to sort them out. Or I'm going to die trying. No one gets to come and just touch my kids and, and just hurt my children. I will protect them with my life. I will throw myself into the jaws of a crocodile or a shark to protect my children. I don't even have to think about it. The enemy doesn't just get to come and just take what everyone's and just hurt this church and hurt people in this church. He doesn't get to do that, to hurt our family, to take what is our inheritance. He doesn't get, he doesn't have the right to do that. And if he's trying... You can't just ignore it. You've got, to, you've got to let a righteous jealousy, a righteous anger stir up inside of you. Say, oh, no, 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 not on my watch. That ain't going to happen. I'm going to deal with that in Jesus' name. And it's easy. I can. We have authority in Christ to trample on snakes and scorpions and on every demonic spirit. We can break it and command them to go. Jesus' mighty name. So, Father, right now we stir ourselves in the Spirit. We rise up in the Spirit and in our authority that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you that we are ambassadors of the highest government in the universe. The kingdom of God that rules and reigns over every other kingdom. Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And we are in the one who has all authority in heaven and earth. And today, Lord God, we just stand in our authority and we trample on the enemy. And if there's any attacks, demonic attacks trying to come against this church, come against these people, these precious, beloved children of God, this mighty, glorious church in the Philippines that is called to reach this nation, we say, enemy, take your hands off in Jesus' name. We break your attacks right now. Take your hand off families, relationships, of finances, of people's bodies. Right now we break sickness in Jesus' name. We don't tolerate it. We don't accept it. It has no rights. It has no rights. It has no authority. Jesus has all authority over every title, over every name, over every sickness. We say, sickness, you got no power, no right. We break you right now in Jesus' name. We break you off new life. The fort. We command you to go in Jesus' name. We declare healing and wholeness over people's bodies. 
over finances, where there are demonic spirits attacking people's finances. Right now, we resist the enemy. We stand against it in Jesus' name. We break that attack right now. We command it to go in Jesus' name. We release the favor and the blessing of heaven over people's finances. We declare increase, increase, blessing in Jesus' name. And over our loved ones, the children, family, friends, those that are lost, they belong to us. They belong to us. They're in our inheritance. We say, devil, take your hands off them in Jesus' name. Oh, release them, release them, release them. We break the, the God of this age that is blinding their minds. We break that influence off their minds in Jesus' name. We release the light of Christ, the glory of Christ to shine into their hearts, to reveal the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We call our lost friends and family to come to Jesus. We say, come to the Savior. Come and be saved in Jesus' name. Over the next few weeks and months, we call in a harvest to come into New Life Church. Our friends, family, work colleagues, we call you in. Come and be saved. Come and be a part of this family. In Jesus' mighty name, we release that in the Spirit to happen right now. Right now, let it happen. A mighty harvest. A mighty harvest. Hey! Oh, shaka mama, shaka. Just pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit. Shut up, Sombra. Rabba, Baba, Bakayan, the Rabba soul. Oh, Rabba, Baba, Baba, soul. Yella, Baba, Baba, Bakayan, the Rabba Sombre. Yella, Baba, 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 Shan, the Rabba Somba. Spirit of life, spirit of life, come, come. 